Yesterday, I finally wrapped up a few days worth of testing for the latest Battlefield title. The focus was mainly on GPU performance, so I stuck with my Core i7 6700K test rig for the most part. The DirectX 11 results had the RX 480 and GTX 1060 performing pretty close to one another, though the GeForce graphics card was a few frames faster. I only took a quick look at DirectX 12 performance because what I'd seen so far wasn't that impressive, and reports from others at the time seemed to be in line with my own findings. The AMD graphics cards delivered around the same performance while the Nvidia cards were a bit slower. A few of you were quick to point out that a few highly rated outlets such as Digital Foundry found the RX 480 to be quite a bit faster when using DirectX 12. With my Core i7 test rig overclocked to 4.5GHz this wasn't the case. At 1440p I got the same performance of 67-68fps to 68 FPS on average. Since finishing my initial testing, AMD also released the Crimson 16.10.2 driver, which they accidentally forgot to pass along to my little channel. Anyway, last night around 10pm my AMD contact was still awake and he passed the driver along. What a champ! I immediately got testing and I'm about to show you what I found. For this video I'm just going to focus on the GTX 1060 and RX 480 along with the Core i7 6700K and Core i5 6600K. Since we won't be doing a huge amount of testing for this one, I'll just show you the gameplay footage which has been captured using the external Elgato HD60S. Let's get to it. First up, we have the 6700K test machine which is clocked at 4.5GHz. With the tank stationary at the start of our test, we see the 1060 is a few frames faster than the 480 using DirectX 11. However, using DirectX 12, the 480 is around 5 or so frames faster than the 1060. Interestingly, the 480 looks to be delivering much the same performance using DirectX 12 as it did DirectX 11. The difference being that the GTX 1060 is slower. Let's just watch this footage till the end and then move on to the Core i5 results. Here we have the same system with a quick CPU swap. Now armed with the Core i5-6600K, which I might add isn't overclocked, let's have a look at the performance. At the beginning of this test it's interesting to note that the performance is almost exactly the same as what we saw with the 6700K. In my initial benchmark I noted that when briefly testing with the 6600K it was just a few frames slower than the overclocked 6700K, and once again here we can see that this is indeed the case. Again, we see that for the most part the RX 480's performance seems much the same using DirectX 12 and DirectX 11. Meanwhile, the 1060 is up to 10 FPS slower using DirectX 12. Here's a direct comparison between the RX 480 running DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 in our test. Really, at no stage is there more than a 2 FPS difference. Sometimes DirectX 11 was faster and sometimes DirectX 12 was, which makes sense since I originally found no real difference here. These results were recorded using a heavily overclocked Core i7 processor, so again, let's check the Core i5-6600K results. Even with the stock 6600K, the results seem to be much the same, with a few exceptions. Towards the end of the benchmark, where things really kick off, the RX 480 takes a serious performance hit using DirectX 12, and this contradicts what some others have reported. Whereas the RX 480 never drops below 83 FPS using DirectX 11, we see a drop down to 51 FPS very briefly using DirectX 12, while quite a bit of time was spent in the 60s. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Moving on to the final comparison I'd like to make, let's see how the GTX 1060 using DirectX 11 compares to the RX 480 using DirectX 12. Initially, the 1060 can be seen 5 to 7 FPS ahead of the RX 480. Throughout the test, the two do trade blows, though for the most part, the 1060 does stay ahead. At the end of the test, when things get busy, the 1060 never dip below 78 FPS, whereas the RX 480 often drops down into the 60s. This is by no means bad performance from the RX 480, but it was at times 10 FPS slower, despite using DirectX 12. Target 
Okay, so I'm not sure if this has helped clear anything up or just created more questions. I do stand behind my initial DirectX 11 test and strongly believe that to be 100% accurate. If I didn't, I'd amend the video. I admit more DirectX 12 testing needs to be done and I plan to tackle this more in the future. Unfortunately for now, this is the best I could do with the time I have available. So as many of you know, I'm going in for my ACL surgery next week and before then, I've got to cover the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti graphics cards for you guys. Speaking of which, I have a little something extra to show you in this video. I wonder what it could be. Never seen such green boxes from MSI. So there you have it, I've got the 1050 and the 1050 Ti, so it's going to be a busy weekend benchmarking. Um, on Tuesday you should expect to see basically two uh, board partner card reviews, so I'll be covering probably six or seven of the latest games. So you can expect all the normal information in those, including uh, your power consumption and thermals and all that sort of stuff. As for the bigger sort of 20 game benchmarks, I think that Steve's going to be handling that one, and you can expect that a little later in the week. And most likely, first up, we'll be comparing this to the RX 460 2 gigabyte card. So I hope the testing in this video was useful for you guys. I'll see you guys for an episode of Unboxing Boxes with Matt on Monday. Have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, guys, for joining me for another episode of Hardware Unbox. To those of you that already support the channel, thank you so much. It's truly appreciated. And to those of you that would like to support the channel directly, I do have Amazon links and a Patreon link in the video description below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time.